Hey everybody and welcome to Fitness and Fat Loss Secrets. This is episode number 31. And in case you're here for the first time and wondering what the heck is Fitness and Fat Loss Secrets anyway, it is all about answering this one big question. And the question is this, how do we lose weight while still feeling great without cheating by taking dangerous supplements, drugs, or undergoing surgeries that could really hurt us? And how do we sort through all of the confusing information out there when it comes to how to eat and exercise for fat loss? So that's the big question. This Fitness and Fat Loss Secrets Facebook Live has your answers. That said, if you're confused, if you don't know how to get what you want with your body, say if you're in a body that's stuck down here and you don't know what to eat, you don't know how to exercise, you don't know how to think to keep yourself motivated, and you're trying to get up here and you don't know how to get there, or you're stuck for whatever reason, and you're unsure why, ask your question in the comment section below and I will either answer it live here on the, the a fitness and fat loss secrets episode or I'll answer it in a future episode or I'll answer it in a reply back um, to your comment below okay so again if you have questions answer them I'm here to help you out to get you unstuck so that you can move forward in your journey okay all right let's move forward today's episode I'm really excited about this you guys today's episode is gonna be all about how to eat or how to not just how to eat how to stay healthy while vacationing. We are in the vacationing time of uh, the year, right? Where people are on spring break. You might even be on spring break right now as you listen to this. So I'm gonna give you some tips today <clears throat> about how to stay healthy while on vacation. And believe me, I realize when you're on vacation, we're, we're on vacation, so you're not meant to do all the things. That said, we're gonna go through and I'm gonna give you 16 tips that are gonna help you be healthier while on vacation and still enjoy the heck out of your vacation. Cool? All right, let's get rolling. So first thing, first things first. My first tip for uh, while you're on vacation, how to keep yourself healthy is to sleep. Now, you already know this. Think about when you, for whatever reason, it seems kind of silly, but when you sit like on a bus or on a train or on a plane, and you're there for hours on end, how do you feel after? You, you're, you're tired, right? Like, so the thing is about vacationing and traveling, it wears on you, it wears your body down. It takes you out of your normal element, your normal daily routine. And just the fact that you're out of a normal daily routine, that makes you more tired. So one of the things you're, you're gonna want to do is to sleep more. The next question is, well, how, how much sleep? How much do I need to sleep? And, the general answer, as you guys already all know, is about eight hours. That said, uh, the only real way to like kind of know this is to listen to your own body. Every person is unique at some level for how much sleep you need, especially while traveling. Sometimes um, you might need a little less. I was just gone this last week and I slept much less than I sleep on average, but I was at a, I was at a work conference and I was just, I was excited. I was excited during the day. I had all these ideas going in my mind and I was uh, amped up. So I just didn't need as much sleep and I felt amazing and great the, the whole while. Like I didn't, wasn't wanting for any more sleep. I wasn't reaching for, you know, energy drinks, caffeine, coffee, whatever, uh, to keep myself going. I was just ready to go. There's other times that I go away and I know for my own self that sometimes I need more sleep. If I ordinarily sleep about Seven and a half hours is normal for me. Uh, sometimes I need nine, and sometimes it's closer to five and a half or six. But the point here is, is to listen to your body, and despite what the other people you're traveling with need, focus and pay attention to what you need so that you can um, get yourself feeling how you wanna feel. Uh, and also I want you to know this, that the first half of sleep, about the first three to four hours, are all for your body to go through physical repair. And then the last part of sleep is your body all going through psychological repair. So if you're missing out on, especially the front end of sleep, uh, your body physically is not gonna be able to uh, repair itself very well, okay? So anyway, so the point there, listen to your body. That's tip number one. Sleep, listen to your body, sleep as much as you need so that you can feel rested and ready to go so you can get the most out of your uh, vacation. Okay, the, the second tip then. Tip number two is to pace yourself. 
you know, it's uh, easy to get onto vacation and be excited to go and see and do it all, right? And uh, there's time for that. But the, the, the lesson here really is to when you get there, like whatever you are doing, be in it, be in it, be in that thing. So that you weren't just at a place just to like say that, kind of check it off a list. Yep, I saw that. Okay, let's move on to the next thing. Boom. Yep, saw that. Check it. You know, like, you with me? Yeah. So the idea really is to, when you get to something that's cool that you want to check out, like, check it out. Take your time. Be there. Be in it. Be with it. And pace yourself through it. Don't just try to rush through. Uh, it would be even better if you say if you have limited time on vacation. Say maybe it's a three-day vacation. You're not going to have time to take in everything a city has to offer. Well, that's a great reason to go back to the city at a different time. Or if you have the option, uh, many of us don't, but if you do have the option to stay longer, extend your stay and fit it in where it can feel at, you're moving at a pace, seeing everything, doing everything that your vacation has to offer um, so that you can feel good while you're doing it and it is meaningful for you. It's not just a, a check off the list. And uh, the same idea there is like, listen to your body. If you feel like you wanna you know, press yourself, you're getting up at six in the morning, you're off and running, you're seeing this thing and that thing, and you go to 11 or midnight at night and you feel great doing it, then by all means, you go with your bad self, all right? So you can do that, but if, if you're not, if you start in your day and you start feeling worn out, take the afternoon off, it's a big deal, it's a vacation. And so just remember um, at the end of it, um, what it is you really might want out of this vacation for you, okay? All right, cool. Let's next move on to uh, exercise or vacation tip number three to keep yourself feeling good, healthy, and really enjoy your vacation, which is to stretch it out. Now, there's a couple different times in the day that are best for this. And one, my very favorite time, I'll give you the best one first. The best one is just before you go to bed at night. Spend, you don't need a lot of time here, I'm talking three to five minutes. Three to five minutes, and if you're gonna go crazy with it, maybe up to 15. Okay, something like that. So, uh, just you know, one big stretch for every muscle group. You guys all know the stretches. If not, you can find a YouTube video or you can uh, ask me here. I'm happy to share with you stretches you can do. But most of you know stretches you can do. But think about like you know, stretch the behind the arm, the front of the arm, the front of your legs, the back of your legs, your glutes, your hips, and, um, and your back, like you know, do some forward bends, stuff like that. Just to get your body loosened up. Right before bed, you'll, you'll sleep much better because your body feels loose and ready to go. Now, the other best time to do stretching would be in the morning, before you get your day going. And uh, what I like to do here is not necessarily just to get right out of bed and stretch, but to get out of bed, get yourself moving. Even a five minute walk, five, 10, 15 minute walk, then stretch. Try that if you're not already onto that idea and just notice how much better your body feels. It feels so good to move through your day when your body feels loose. And by the way, if you're in the middle of the day, uh, a third option is to squeeze in some, you know, maybe your neck's being a little tight. You can just, you know, stretch your neck in the middle of the day, or maybe your arm's a little tight. You wanna kinda just twist a little bit, or just even open up, put the arms back like this, and stretch out the chest, or roll, roll the shoulders. You, know, you can fit in some of this stuff just as your day goes, or you might be sitting um, on a bus or whatever, you can take your foot and just cross it up over the knee and push that leg down. It doesn't even look like you're stretching, but you are. You're loosening up your hips, and it just feels good. Uh, to do that. So you can sneak in little times um, where you can uh, stretch as well. Okay, so that's that. All right, cool. Now, next one. We're on to tip number four. And tip number four here is to breathe. You're like, what do you mean, Jay? I, I, I gotta breathe. And uh, yeah, you're right, you gotta breathe. But this is uh, what I'm referring to really is breathe deep. And I'm gonna give you an exercise technique right now. We're gonna try it together. So, now the exercise technique is what's known as a four, seven, eight breathing technique. And it's a technique that I learned from Andrew Weil. I'm not sure if he invented it, uh, but anyway, I learned it from him and I've been using it for several years now and I've taught it to bunches of people. And what's really cool about this breathing technique is um, you can feel the difference even in as little as two or three breaths. And right now we're gonna do three breaths. It's gonna take us approximately one minute and the idea with this breath is simply this. You're gonna breathe in for four seconds. You're gonna hold your breath then for seven seconds. And then we're gonna release our breath over eight seconds, okay? So what we're gonna do here first is I'm going to count off the first two breaths for you. 
And then I'm gonna do the last breath with you because I wanna do it with you, all right? All right, so ready? So here we go on uh, the count of three. One, two, three. Okay, breathe in. Two, three, four. Now hold. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and exhale slowly. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And inhale. Two, three, four. Hold. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and exhale slow. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And one more. Hold. Exhale slow. And now just sit, I like to sit kind of sometimes with my palms open and just notice how you feel. It just feels good. You just oxygenated yourself. And it feels really nice. Doesn't that feel good? Just kind of helps your body relax, brings a little bit more oxygen up to your brain, helps relax you a bit. And it's a breath you can use anytime, really. Nobody even has to know you're doing it. You can do it while on a, a bus ride or a train ride in between things or a cab ride, Uber ride. You can do it uh, just before bed. You can do it just before eating. Anytime you feel like you want to just take your stress, maybe you've been going, 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 and you just need to like calm a little bit, right? So if you say, for example, did uh, the breathing and at night, just before you went to bed, the breathing, then some stretching or stretching, then breathing, or breathing, stretching, then breathing, you know, however you want to do it, but you mix it in there and just know that it's something you can do that's free, goes with you anywhere that you are, and it works. It's actually been documented to, in fact, lower blood pressure, which is really cool to know about. So if you have a blood pressure issue, try practicing some of these four, seven, eight breathing techniques and uh, just, it, just know that it helps to lower blood pressure. And it does it because it helps re release stress that's in our, that we're feeling in our bodies, okay? All right, cool, let's move on. So let's move on now to tip number five for how to stay healthy while vacationing. And this tip is to walk everywhere. Now, I wrote walk everywhere, but there's a caveat here. So if you are, if your vacation is a vacation where you're on a hiking trip and you know you're gonna be hiking three, seven, 15 miles today, do you need to necessarily do more walking? Probably not. But if you're that person anyway, you're probably gonna like fit in more walking anyway. I just wanted to like point out that the, uh, the, the point really here is to walk everywhere. A lot of times we're on vacations and we're not doing necessarily a lot of moving around. So this means instead of like if you were on the second or third floor of your hotel, instead of taking the elevator up, go find the stairs at the end of the hallway there and walk up the stairs instead. And if you're gonna um, go to lunch and it's uh, say it's a mile away, instead of jumping in an Uber or taking a bike or a bus or something like that, um, just walk there. Walk there, walk back, fit in, fit in uh, walking any, anywhere that you can and you'll be amazed at how many steps you can fit in. Like I know when um, you know, Kelly and I were just away last week, you know, every single day it was like easy to go above 10,000 steps and most days we're getting near double that to like 20,000 steps every day and that was not necessary with any purposeful exercise. It was just by walking around the, the property we were at and walking to and from the conference room we were going to and just kind of just doing that. And it's amazing how many steps you can rack up. And if you don't have um, a Fitbit or something like that, uh, you know, I use the Apple Watch. But whatever, if you do have something that's really fun to track, see how much you, you have it. If not, it's not a big deal. You don't need to get it. Just try to fit in steps anywhere that you can, okay? So that, that's that one. Now let's move on to tip number six for how to stay healthy and feel great while you're on vacation, which is to have an exercise routine. And um, most of you listening, or many of you listening at least, will have an exercise routine already. And if you don't, it's okay. Uh, <clears throat> because it's really easy to fit in just a, a few things. So if you have an exercise routine, what's cool is like, I think every hotel, I can't recall a hotel that I've been to in the last seven, eight years anyway, that hasn't had a gym. And not only a gym, a really like quite fantastic gym. Like 
And, you know, it used to be like maybe a gym had like one treadmill and uh, maybe a pair of dumbbells over in the corner or something like that. But many of them today are nice. They're like these really nice gyms. They have maybe some treadmills, ellipticals, uh, full dumbbells. They have like exercise balls like we have back there in the back corner of the studio here. They might even have, uh, you know, TRX in the gym. They have like all, all these things for you to be able to use while away on a uh, trip. Now, uh, when I say have an exercise routine, I want to keep the perspective that you are on vacation here and you don't need to be setting any records where I'm not asking you to like go and like, you know, kill yourself or like set any new records while you're on vacation. That's not the idea here. The idea is just to keep yourself going to give your, when you go to a, to a gym while you're away on vacation, what it does, it helps keep your body's metabolism functioning. Uh, let's think about this. Do you generally eat more while on a vacation? Yep. Do you generally drink more alcoholic beverage for those of you that drink? Uh, yes. And if you don't drink alcohol, do you drink more sugar laden beverages even if you don't drink alcohol? And the answer is probably yes to all those. So does it stand the reason that we should do some things that keep our bodies metabolism function at a higher level. It does, and that's where strength training can really come in and help you guys a lot to feel really good uh, while on a vacation. So, you can find the gym, and if, and if there's not a gym, you can also um, find local gyms in the area, maybe get a day pass, or a couple day pass, a week long pass, to go and be at a gym. And if you're a member here at Alban Fitness, we are affiliated with uh, Fit Buddy Bootcamp, like you see back there on the back wall, and there are over 400 locations, so chances are, pretty much every city you go to, there's a Fit Body Boot Camp there that you can, because you are, a, if you're a member here, if you're a member with us, then you can go take advantage of that. And even if you're neither of those cases, there's not a gym, there's not a Fit Body or another gym you want to go to, it's easy enough in your hotel room to drop down on the floor or lie onto your bed and, you know, knock out some push-ups, do some sit-ups, you know, whatever the things is that you know, find a YouTube video that can lead you into bodyweight exercises. We have bodyweight exercises here. You know if you're a member here, we have that travel pack that we have four uh, follow along workouts for you to do here. And uh, we send you with some uh, easy equipment like a couple of bands, some sliders, some things that you that travel very, very lightly and easily into any suitcase. So you have lots of options. The point is, is to find exercise uh, in, and uh, do it, okay? All right, cool. Let's move on to the next thing then, which is <clears throat> to eat breakfast. And it's pretty much common knowledge to all of you out there to, to know that eating breakfast is the most important meal of the day. And uh, as a general rule, I, I completely agree with that. There's some of you out there that it may not be your most important meal of the day uh, for various reasons based on your own metabolic type. That's a different story. But for the most of you, like truly the large majority, like 95% of you listening, eating breakfast is very, very important. And doesn't necessarily mean you have to go out to a restaurant and grab a big, uh, you know, a big breakfast out somewhere. You can do some simple things in your room. One of the things that I've come accustomed to love doing while traveling is everywhere that I've traveled recently, again, if you're anywhere near a city, and maybe even in the rural areas now, I'm not sure, but chances are you're gonna be in a city or near a city if you're on vacation. And most of the grocery stores these days deliver food right to where you are. So check it out, like, you know, a couple days before you're going, search grocery stores in the zip code that you're going to and see if they deliver. Chances are they do. And you can, you can go on and, and check out all the items you like. Some things that I like to put into our room while, while traveling or get hard boiled eggs. You can buy at every grocery store these days, they carry hard boiled eggs already peeled, ready to eat. All you have to do is like package and, and eat them. And that's like super easy things, like not fancy, it may not taste like the most amazing, but it's something simple that helps start your day in the right way. And you can pair that up with some uh, crackers, gluten-free or otherwise. You can also um, you know, get some bread, what, you know, whatever thing that you might like to go with it. Um, uh, if you uh, kick it up a, a notch, you know, like something that I like to do no matter where I go is, you guys have heard me talk about this before, but is to have a green drink, right? A like green drink to start off every single morning and traveling all you gotta do is like open this up, take a scoop of powder out and throw it into some water, mix it around, it makes it super easy and then uh, drink it down and you're super good. Uh, the other tip that I like to do is uh, with um, starting off the day in the morning for breakfast is make sure you start with water, then move to a vegetable, like in the vegetable can be literally just this, super simple, right? 
and then go with to your protein and carbohydrate choices after that. And uh, with water, I, whenever we travel anywhere, I always travel with a water bottle, something similar to this one, where at airports these days, like at the water fountains, most of them have that filtered water thing where you know you stick that under and then it just fills up your water bottle. So you have free water there. And then uh, going back to our last tip, which is most places have an exercise room. In almost every exercise room that I've been to, again, for a long time now, they all have water inside. So guess what I do? Yep, I go in and I fill up my water bottle um, with water, so I'm not have to buy the hotel water for one. Because like I was just in Las Vegas, then Orlando, in Las Vegas, they literally wanted eighteen dollars for one bottle of water, I and mean, that's just insane, right? So, um, anyway, you can, so you can either order from grocery stores and use the, those tips, and make sure to bring a water bottle or two, because uh, you want you're gonna want to have one or two of these so that you can always have water around you no matter where you go. All right, cool. All right, now let's move on to tip number eight for how to stay healthy while vacationing, and that is to hydrate. And I'm not gonna go into too much more detail about that. Just travel with a water bottle and drink it all day. The one thing I want you to know is if you're not onto this idea already, which is to drink half your body weight in ounces of water every single day. And if you're traveling, you need a little bit more. If you're doing uh, alcohol, in your day, you need a little bit more. If you're doing caffeine in your day, you need a little bit more. So if you're a 200 pound person, uh, you need to drink 100 ounces of water. If you're not doing these other things, if you're in the sun all day, if you've been traveling in a plane, the recommendation while traveling on a plane is to have one uh, or eight ounces of water every hour that you're traveling. That helps keep you hydrated. Being at the altitude dehydrates our body. So that's a little uh, tip. And then otherwise, half of your body weight in ounces every day plus eight ounces more for every cup of coffee, eight ounces more for every alcoholic drink. So if you have two drinks, uh, have 16 ounces more of water, okay? And if you have 10 drinks, which I hope you don't, but in case you do, because sometimes we all do that, right? And um, have 10 glasses of water, you're gonna need it. Your body's gonna get really dehydrated, you're gonna need it, okay? All right, cool. Next one then is to, uh, to cut down on alcohol. This is tip number nine. Tip number nine is to cut down on alcohol and or sweet drinks. It's, um, and I know you're on vacation and I don't wanna like poo poo your vacation, uh, but it's just, but I, at the same time, what I want you to do is I want you to have an amazing time on vacation and feel really good and still have some drinks. The point really is, is like, you know, one to two drinks, totally fine. Even three, you know, like over a period of time, it's like totally fine and, and good. And for many of you, like having that many drinks, it's gonna be like not an issue at all. But if the one, two, or three drinks turns into 10, you're not gonna feel good. And it's gonna really take a toll onto your body. It's gonna mess up your sleep, so you're not gonna sleep well, so you're gonna be extra tired. It takes a toll on B vitamins, it knocks B vitamins out of your body, so you're not gonna feel good. And um, it, of course, dehydrates you, so you're not gonna feel good for that reason either. So that said, if, if your one, two, or three drinks turns into, you know, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, whatever it might turn into for you, get a little carried away, which uh, again, we all do sometimes. If you do, just have a plan in place for what to do, when and if that is the predicament you find yourself in. And the, the basic recovery plan is for one, rehydrate. You just dehydrate yourself, so you need to rehydrate yourself, right? The <clears throat> second thing then is to uh, have a little caffeine. So whether it's in the form of coffee or some other form of caffeine, have some caffeine that generally will prop you up and make you feel a little better. Then you need some kind of a pain reliever, generally like a, an Advil or a Leave or Tylenol, something like whatever works for you that you like. And then um, also um, uh, a green drink, right? This stuff is like a miracle cure. So if you drink a bunch and, and you can uh, have this even before you go to bed, this can work wonders for you while traveling. So. Make sure if you don't have this green drink, get it. Make this investment into yourself. It's like the easiest, best thing you can possibly do is to have a green drink every single day, but especially if you're gonna have too many drinks and if you drink a bunch, have two of these. Have one early in the day, then have one after you drink, before you go to bed, and you'll do yourself all kinds of favors before you wake up the next, next day. And then, um, yeah, that's, I guess that's it. Th those things right there, so the water, the caffeine, the pain reliever, the green drink, and sleep. So those are the things for, in case you do too much drinking. No judgment. But in case you do, 
you now have uh, a winning solution. Just make sure to do those things. And if you forget, like write down what I just said so you have a, an execution plan, okay? All right, cool. Let's move on to tip number 10 for how to stay healthy while vacationing. And that is to eat your veggies. We all know we need to eat our veggies. Our moms taught us this. We read it everywhere. No matter what diet plan you've ever tried, they've all included veggies, correct? Right. There's a reason for that. Veggies give us our energy. They give us our health. And especially when we're on vacation, our energy uh, gets taxed more. And again, if we're drinking or you know, not sleeping on schedule or if you're in a, if you're travel to a different time zone, all these things can kind of mess up our body. So eating your veggies is one of the best things you can do. And um, so things like when you go out to dinner at a restaurant, start with a salad or instead of a bread tray, ask if they have some uh, veggies that they can bring out. They can snack on those before you get into your meat and um, uh, you know uh, carbohydrates, whatever other thing that might be on the plate. Okay, so, so do that, and again, uh, this. This is you guys, I keep coming back to it, but it's so dang important, and it's so easy, and it tastes good. <coughs> it looks weird, if you're not used to having a green drink, or seeing green in a glass, it looks weird, but I promise, it tastes really good, and you're gonna love how it makes you feel, okay? So do that. Uh, the next thing, then, is to eat plenty of fruit. And uh, again, uh, fruit, there's, uh, fruit are filled with water. And so it's one of the ways you can stay hydrated. So whether it's eating an apple or an orange, or it doesn't matter what it is, pick your favorites, or maybe you're to an exotic place that has some uh, local fruits that we don't have like wherever it is you live. So try out that local produce and check it out. But the, the point is it's gonna have all this water inside the fruit, and the kind of water that's inside fruit is the kind of the best water you can have for our bodies. It's the kind of water that literally will bring life into your body. It literally is charged up correctly so that it hydrates you is better than about any other thing you can do. So having some water-based fruits and the vegetables like we just talked about in tip number 10 um, are a great thing to do, all right? All right, cool. So next, let's move on to tip number 12 for how to stay healthy and feel great while on vacation. And tip number 12 is to make some of your own meals. And this goes back to, um, we talked earlier about finding a grocery store that will deliver. And if one doesn't deliver, this last time I didn't even check actually, uh, if a grocery store delivered, but uh, Kelly and I, we hopped in a, we found there was a Super Target like four miles away or something. So we hopped in an Uber and uh, just went to Target, did some Target shopping, grabbed some some things at this uh, Super Target and then um, made our way back to the hotel. So we bought some water, some things we just talked about, some eggs, some salads, some things just to make some really, really easy, some bread, some uh, sandwich meat, which you often don't ordinarily eat, but while on vacation, it's a super easy thing. It felt actually very refreshing to not go out and eat meals. You guys know what I mean, right? Like eating meals out is fun if you're not doing it on an every meal basis. But if you do it on an every meal basis for even a couple of days, it gets old. It's like, come on, I'm like tired of the kind of the whole process of it all. Uh, and like usually the portions are really big. And sometimes what tastes the best is just literally like a couple pieces of bread, some lunch meat of your choice, some cheese, whatever it is you like, and just super, super simple. Maybe throw some greens in there. Just keep it super simple and like just eat that. It takes like two seconds to make and five minutes to eat and then you're done. You're not messing with a whole, you know, an hour long process just to get a meal in. Sometimes that feels the very best. The other thing you can do while traveling on vacation to make your own meals is sometimes it just feels really great to do something like this. Like this is our paleo meal and it's a protein powder, but it also has uh, back here, like the label shows that it has a whole, whole bunch of other things in it. You know, it has all your multivitamins, minerals right into this particular product. There's also some, a uh, little bit of carbohydrate, not much, but a little bit of carbohydrate and a little bit of healthy fat that are built right in. So it can work as a meal replacement while you're on vacation. And sometimes just having, it might not even feel like a meal, or maybe you had a meal last night that was um, really heavy and you're not even hungry this morning. But because you have your paleo meal with you, in your green drink, all you're gonna do is you're gonna mix up a green drink, have a paleo meal shake, and boom, you're good to go. You had everything you need. You had your healthy proteins, you got your veggies in there, you hydrated because those are mixed with uh, liquids, and you are ready to take on the day, and it makes you feel light. There's very little digesting you have to do when you do meals like that. So traveling was in, uh, by the way, when I travel, I'll take like green powder like this and I'll put it in a Ziploc bag so it doesn't take up much space, and the same for the uh, protein powder. Just 
take your uh, uh, protein powder, put it in a Ziploc bag, and then inside these containers, there's uh, this little scooper. Just throw that scooper into your uh, Ziploc bag, and then you are ready to go uh, from there. It's super simple. And then the other thing is to um, do something like this. This is our twice daily multivitamin. And when you're, again, when you're on vacation, you're running around a lot, and if you're having alcohol, you're gonna deplete yourself of vitamins and minerals. The other thing that happens while on vacation is that many of the meals out, the nutrition level is just terrible. It's not good. And so you're just not getting the nutrition into your body. So there's no way for you to really feel good. So taking something like this full spectrum of multivitamin, mineral, uh, twice daily multi there uh, can really help you a lot to feel really, really good, okay? All right, so next thing then is to, um, well, I guess one more note on that is every hotel room pretty much these days, I actually ran into one that didn't have this option uh, when I was in Vegas, but uh, not except for but a charge. But most every hotel room has a refrigerator in there, like a, you know that small little refrigerator kind of tucked underneath uh, the TV area, something like that. But most of them these days have it. And if they don't have it, uh, you can call and ask for it. And if they want to charge, I learned a little trick I'm gonna turn you on to. The little trick is this. If you tell the hotel that you have medications that you're on that have to be refrigerated, I know it's kind of a scam, but it might be true, but it's kind of a scam. You see what I'm saying? Anyway, point is, if you have medications that need to be refrigerated, by law, they need to re be able to provide you a refrigerator. I did run into one situation where I said that, and the hotel said, oh, well, sir, we'd be glad to store your medications in the refrigerator downstairs here, and then every day you can come and get it. And I said, well, that's terribly inconvenient. No, thank you, I don't wanna do it. And I made do with you know going to the ice machine over and over and over and uh, keeping the foods that I needed to keep cold. I just kept them cold on ice in a sink uh, and in the ice bucket. And uh, so there, there's, and the point really, I guess, is there's options, and most of them have a refrigerator, so it should be pretty easy. The, the second hotel I was at this last week had a refrigerator, super simple, and it worked out awesome. All right, cool. Now, tip number 13 for keeping yourself healthy while on vacation is to travel with some wet naps and or hand sanitizer. So whether it's like kind of like baby wipes or hand wipes, like there's several options for these. You can find it at Target, Walgreens, wherever that you might shop, you probably already have them. Just make sure to throw them in your bag and that way when you're out, if you're out and you're um, about to grab something to eat, Wipe your hands with one of these sanitizing wipes or a quick spray if there's not a bathroom uh, to wash your hands. And by the way, even if there is a bathroom, I found on a number of occasions that the bathroom water would never get warm. And the trick to getting uh, germs and bad bacteria off your hands is you have to have a combination of warm water and soap. If you have cold water and soap, it's not gonna work. So you need warm, and, you know, warm to hot water plus soap to make it work. So if you go into a bathroom and it's cold water, you still will be, uh, you still could have germs and things that can make you sick while you're traveling away. So make sure to, if it has warm water and soap, that's the best, do that and, and don't use the hand sanitizer or wipes. <clears throat> but if you don't have those options, you need a quick, convenient way. It's nice to just to know that you have the option and you can, again, you can put some into a Ziploc bag that can fit right into your pocket or a purse and, um, so you don't, have to, you don't have to carry, like if sometimes these things come in a kind of bigger container. You don't need to carry a big container. Just put a, you know, two or three or whatever you might need for a day into a Ziploc bag, which is another great tip that I'll, I'll give you right now, which is to um, travel with a bunch of Ziploc bags. Like I'll <clears throat> like to take like three or four Target bags and then I will take some big Ziploc bags, maybe four or five of them, and then I'll take like maybe eight or 10 small Ziploc bags. And I find that I, they, they're just awesome to have while on vacation. So whether you eat out at a restaurant and you have leftovers, then you can maybe have a Ziploc bag so it's not leaking all over inside the refrigerator that's in your room or whatever. Some of it's nice for having these wipes or uh, the, the Target bags and or I'll bring a couple garbage bags along with to put your dirty clothes in to separate. But just having various size of bags while you travel, they don't take up any space. And I will always find that it's, they just come in handy to have them. So if you're not onto that one, do that one. Next one, you guys, we're gonna, I'm gonna talk to you about tip number 14 for how to stay healthy while on vacation. And it is a Japanese concept, and I'm not sure I'll say this right, but that's, it's Hara Hachi Bu. H-A-R-A-H-A-C-H-I-B-U. 
Harahachibu. So again, I'm not, I'm probably butch butchering the pronunciation, but the point is this. It's a concept, Japanese concept, that says to eat until you're 80% full and then stop. And um, so you might be thinking like, well, how in the world am I gonna know if I'm 80% full? And it's just, a, it's, a, it's a judgment call, it's just a guess. The point is, is, the big point here is really to eat, to just always stop eating before you feel the uncomfortable full. If you eat so much that you are like, oh my God, I just need to lay down, and you're like, eyes are like all druggy looking and you like feel tired out, then uh, you've eaten way too much. But if you stop just before that, and actually if you stop much before that where you're 80% full, what will happen is if you stop when you feel about 80% full, in about 10, 15, 20 minutes, you will feel all the way full. So the feeling will come, but our bodies take a little bit to catch up to what actually, um, to, to actually how much food we just took in. Okay, so use that. Hara hachi boo. And if you know how to pronounce that better, uh, send me a little tip, all right? Okay, cool, let's move on to tip number 15. Actually, I already mentioned this one, but it's to, to take your vitamins, okay? Bring multivitamins, super, super easy. Take some of these. Uh, oftentimes, again, I'll, like, instead of taking this whole bottle, I'll take these out, dump a couple in as small as a bug bag, and then throw it in the suitcase or throw it in my um, you know, little dob kit. And then I have those in the way. That way, each day, I can pull multivitamin out, take it, and I'm good to go. Okay? And then the last tip I have for you guys is this. is tip number 16, our final tip of the day, which is to protect your skin. Okay, there's two ways that I'm thinking about here to protect your skin. I think the most obvious one probably uh, is to wear sunscreen. I think most of you guys are already doing that. But put sunscreen on um, to protect your skin from sunburn. Uh, that said, um, it is great for you. The research is clear to be exposed to uh, an uncovered skin for certain parts of the day just so that you don't get, it, the point is that you don't want to get burned or red. So if you're going to be out all day, say you're like on a beach and you're going to be outside all day, uh, put sunscreen on so you don't get burned, but if you're only going to be out for 15 to 30 minutes, you probably don't need any sunscreen and your body will actually be healthier because you'll absorb the sunshine and it'll help your body to produce vitamin D and you'll feel really good and it'll help you feel um, healthier. So anyway, the point is don't get burned. So keep sunscreen around and maybe even two or three different uh, SPFs. So sometimes maybe uh, an SPF 8, maybe a 15, a 30, and a 50. If you have all those in a, in a bag, then depending on your situation and how long you're out, or if you do get too much sun, you might use the higher one. If you need more sun, maybe use none or one of the lower ones. You, know, you can mix and match, but that way at least you're, uh, you're protected that way. Now the second way to protect your skin is depending on where you're going, uh, bug spray. Okay, so having a bug spray, there's lots of options on the market. There's ones with and without DEET, so depending on uh, your uh, belief systems there around uh, uh, what DEET can or maybe would not do to your body, um, you might want to uh, avoid that or maybe, maybe not. It's a, uh, that's a personal choice. But the point really is uh, to protect yourself from the bugs, especially places that uh, have mosquitoes. If you're traveling to certain areas, look for places that have mosquito um, carried diseases and, and it's be best to protect yourself uh, that way from that. All right, you guys? Okay, so that's it. We are through episode number 31 of Fitness and Fat Loss Secrets. I wanna say thank you so much for uh, tuning in and for asking your questions and for uh, passing this along. If you got any value out of today's Fitness and Fat Loss Secrets, I would like you to hit the like and share buttons to spread the word, spread this around. This is free information we're trying to help everybody here better. The other thing I'm gonna do is, um, when you get back from vacation, we all need, uh, most of the time, we need a back on track plan. So I put together here, it's a little sneak peek, right? A little sneak peek. Now, that's, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a link just uh, above the video here. You might find it even below the video, but look above or below this video, and you will find a link that will uh, take you to this back on track plan. And it's gonna tell you how to get back on track with your body, with your mind, and your spirit. And it's gonna give you um, a process for how to get back on track in just three short days. Okay, so you're feeling all the way back to normal, back to, not even back, you know, back to your, hopefully your normal is great, and if your normal is not great, this will get you feeling back, or get you feeling to a place where you actually feel really great. And for those of you that are uh, from the Allman Fitness page, if you're not already one of our prize members here, I want you to look above the video here, and you're gonna see a link for three free afterburn sessions. Click on that link, 
sign up, come on in, we're gonna take good care of you, we'll walk you through, we're gonna help you go from where you are to where you want, it is that you wanna go. And if you're already one of our prize members here and you have any questions at all, ask them. You can ask them on this Fitness and Fat Loss Secrets live episode, you can ask them to your trainer while you're here in the studio. But uh, the point is, don't go with your questions unanswered. We're here to help, we're here to serve you in every way. I love you guys for showing up for yourselves, and until next week, at 1045 where we're live every single week. Have a great week and we'll talk soon. Bye guys.